All right, thank you, Jay. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Jonathan Wood, and I've been working on VoteLock, which is a blockchain application for a secure online voting system. So a little bit of background about me. I got into blockchain first about two years ago, started out with Bitcoin, as most people do hearing about this weird digital money thing. And then in 2016, when the primaries started going off, I became fascinated with the election process and all the complaints that were happening around it. Everyone was complaining about everything about the election from long lines to worrying that it's going to, could be hacked and we're still worrying about how susceptible it is to being hacked. And so I followed that for several months and even in the actual election, even after the election happened, there was still, the results were I almost contested. Illinois even did a recount, which cost them $4 million and took two weeks to, do it, to recount their votes. Didn't end up changing the result, but the point comes down to the fact that our election system was designed over a century ago, and it's outdated now. And the real fascinating thing <laughs> that arose for me was I look back, and every two years, there's a flurry of reports and complaints about how outdated our election system is. And then we forget about it and we're surprised that it's still broken two years later when we try to vote again. So I figured before the next one comes around, someone has to do something to fix this, which is where a vote lock comes in. Uh, I started uh, connecting with people at the University of Delaware and beyond who shared a passion for developing new solutions in the world. Um, so now what was once just researching vote luck has actually expanded to several different blockchain projects. We have, I'm here with Trey, uh, Jama, and Jeremy, who are work, have each themselves started their own mining rigs and are research, working with the university to scale that up. Uh, Christopher, who's been st researching IOTA, and then Jeremy, as well as four others back at the University of Delaware, we're the ones working on vote lock. Uh, about a year ago, we started developing to build out our own blockchain for voting. Uh, that we finished a prototype and last spring had uh, powered an election with about 300 people, small scale. And what we learned from that, that is uh, blockchains are hard to scale. Uh, so we were only validating about one transaction every four seconds. So since then we've moved on to Ethereum and right now we're re, uh, refactoring VoteLock to work with Solidity and at the same time continuing to reach out to election departments and private corporations uh, who handle shareholder elections to see where are the best places for a blockchain voting system. So if any of you are passionate about voting and elections or interested in some of the other projects that um, all of us are working on, feel free to connect afterwards. We'll be here talking and we're just a few miles south at the University of Delaware trying to change the world if any of you want, want to join us. Thank you. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm a ju junior right now. Uh, we're all students there. What's the name of your department? Uh, we're working on the, it's called, the project's called VIP, Vertically Integrated Projects. So it's a multi-semester research project with the goal of uh, developing commercial, or new technology for commercial applications. Um, Andy Novison is the director of the program, although different, prof different teams are headed by different uh, professors. Yeah. Um, we'll, yeah, we can connect that. <laughs> yeah. No? All right. I'm not that interesting. No questions. Okay. No? Oh. Yeah. Because mostly, did you kind of take a survey of the landscape as to who else is working in this space? Yeah. There are actually, quite um, encouragingly, there are, um, I've identified at this point, at least eight other blockchain voting companies. Some have tried Kickstarter campaigns. Some have, one, um, one project out of Russia just a few weeks ago announced their ICO later this year. Uh, some like uh, Votem or Follow My Vote have raised private funding. Um, so there's, some have filed patents. So there's at least eight projects, probably far more than that around the world at different stages. So some are focusing more on elections. Some are focusing more on shareholder elections. Um, so there's a good mix. It's growing. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think you had a question then back to you.
Yeah. So there are uh, blockchains that are that have free transaction and much more throughput than Ethereum. Why did you choose Ethereum with the mm -hmm. transaction fees and the slow, low, low scalability? Because so we have looked at a few other um, pub public blockchains, most promisingly IOTA, um, which Christopher has been heading up, and. I do think long term, some of those other solutions are very promising. But when we were working with, uh, we tried working over the summer with a little with IOTA, it's still very new. Uh, w the code we wrote three weeks later, we had to go back and completely refactor because they had come in three weeks they had come out with three updates. So it's, there are a lot of projects out there that are brand new and just look like in a year or a year and a half, they'll be wonderful and really promising. Just at this time, they're just still changing and still maturing. Yeah. Do you uh, know Andrea Tibia now? Yes, the head of the Delaware Blockchain Initiative. She's yeah. been very helpful. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you familiar with uh, District X? Yeah. Yeah, you should probably mm -hmm. try to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're kind of like the whole voting. I think they're uh, partners with Augur. Mm -hmm. My understanding is they're decentralized communities, is that right? Yeah, so mm -hmm. like, you know, if, you, if you're trying to like uh, start a program, you can kind of reach out to them and they can like help you. Okay. If, 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 if that's what you I didn't know they did voting, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in how there are some democratic implications, or there's some implications for democracy that blockchain is enabling. Uh, there's a flux party in Australia, that's mm -hmm. a good one I know, but yeah. it's an app that has a political party. They put an app in the seat of power instead of a representative. Um, I was curious if that's on your roadmap or maybe another project. Yeah, um, we're not looking at that at the moment just because there's, there's so many ways you could go with voting. It's so many different organizations um, use it and require some sort of voting system. So we can't be everywhere at once. But yeah, there are a lot of really cool applications out there. Uh, I think someone earlier mentioned liquid democracy and other things yeah. being made possible by blockchain. There's a lot of cool projects out there. <laughs> I'd be interested to hear a little bit about your experience talking to government officials about changing their election. Mm. I, I uh, frustrating. They're, they're not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, many of them are confident that what they have now works and gets the job done at least. Others um, are aware that their software is hard to use by people, but most I've talked to who are looking for, um, they go blockchain, cryptocurrency, I heard a bit of Bitcoin, but like, what's that? Um, they're more looking, uh, there has been a push over the past two years to update voting machines, but so far, uh, none of the big parties or states have been actively looking for blockchain solutions yet. And part of that, I feel, is just an education problem. It's, yeah. Blockchain is still difficult to understand, particularly for someone who's not actively trying to learn about it or doesn't yeah. see the need to learn about it. You might even take that out of the sales process and just tell me you have a secure voting machine. Yeah, that's, um, uh, I, I, except to the group like this, we've done exactly that, just saying yeah. secure online voting system yeah. as opposed to something else. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. How do you solve the sustainability of scalability? What the, you're looking into? So we tried doing that ourselves and didn't really work. Um, so right now, just trying to work with as many public blockchain projects as there are and looking at the ones that look most promising and um, trying to support the ecosystems because uh, as they develop, we'll be able to take advantage of them. So, yeah, scalability is a big problem, and yeah, we're we don't really have the means to do that all by ourselves. So we're trying to insert ourselves into other ecosystems to take advantage of their work. Yeah. All right, I gotta go. One more, One more question: We gotta do it for like proof of identity and stuff like that. Proof of identity. We there's one other group of us that's um, working with trying to validate identities via biometrics. Um, so they've uh, done a lot of research into fingerprints and a bit into facial recognition software. Um, we've also been looking at other um, API solutions that, um, but that's, yeah, that's a challenge for decentralized systems. The thing is if we were go to um, 
a state or a government election, they already have processes in place for validating identities. You already have an application process for uh, voter identification. Um, you write down your driver's license number, date of birth, and address, and mail that in. So there's also the potential that we could just continue those existing processes, um, solve and disrupt just the voting and the vote tabulation and auditing first, and then once we have that done, progress into other areas of voting. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Jay.